Welcome to Inspire with Ray and Stephanie. We're so glad that you joined us today. Our vision is inspiring the world to know God's love, experience his salvation, and be reconciled to him. We're so excited for our live show today with Pastors Ernie and Tony Ceballos from Everlasting Covenant Ministries. Yes, and we just, uh, we're so grateful that they were able to come to our show on such a short notice. We had got a phone call uh, late Sunday evening that Apostle Hailu and Elder Hailu had a family emergency and weren't able to come to the show. And so we just want to ask our viewers to please keep their family in prayer as they're going through this time. And then know that we are going to have her on at another time this year. Pastor Ray? All right. Well, Pastors Ernie and Tony Ceballos are the lead pastors of Everlasting Covenant Ministries in San Bernardino, California. They've been married for 35 glorious years, but at one time, Pastor Ernie's life found him in a life of drug addiction and gang membership, but in 1994, that all turned around and the Lord saved yes. him, saved his marriage, yeah. and we're so honored to have Pastors Ernie and Tony Ceballos with us today. Yes. God bless oh, you. Thank you so much well, thank, for coming. Thank you so much, Pastor Ray and Pastor Stephanie, for mm -hmm. having us here yes. this afternoon. Well, you know what? I know that we were talking before the program, and it's so great to hear that the Lord is really blessing your ministry and how you were saying about how you have the leaders that God has brought, and now you're really starting to build. So tell us, what is the Lord doing in your ministry? Well, what uh, the Lord is doing in these times in our ministry, He's building a solid uh, leadership group there within, within us. Uh, we started about, I want to say, a little over a year ago, there in our backyard and we were there and the lord drew a nice uh, size crowd there and then all of a sudden we we're having a good time praising the lord worshiping there having the the services and then uh, all of a sudden this big wind came out of nowhere and we were having service in the tent okay and oh. that's the beautiful thing about god's people that when we began to have the service there in the backyard people just be people were drawn they mm. began to come Right. Wow. They began. Right. Uh, yeah. They began to bring the chairs. They began. Somebody donated the tent. Wow. Uh, somebody else came, and That's right powerful. before that, somebody uh, had just purchased at a yard sale sound equipment. Yeah. And they came, <laughs> and and they told me this. They said this. They said, I don't know why I bought this sound equipment. I'm not <laughs> even going to use it. Okay. But now that you started the church here in your house, God told me to bless you with it. Oh. And so everything. I mean, just started to fall into place but like i was saying we're having an awesome time there at our, in our backyard and we're in the middle of a service and it was uh it was a hot day okay wow. it was hot sun was out and i don't know where this big wind just came and in the middle of service i'm preaching some of the members are there and they're holding the tent because oh. the wind was oh my getting goodness. ready to take it up wow and so we're there and, and we're holding down the tent and this big rush of gust of wind came, oh. and it just blew the tent. And, but after that, we looked at each other, and we said, it's time. Oh, God wow. allowed this to happen because we need to get into a building. Wow. wow. So we started looking around for a building, and God blessed us there in San Bernardino with wow. a two-story building, oh uh, enough uh, space for our children, for our kids, our Covenant Kids ministry. And uh, we've been there. Like we've been in ministry, or like I said, over a little over a over a little over a year. Okay. And now what we're doing now in these times, and for the 2018, is establishing now our leadership. Okay. Oh there my gosh, that's amazing. You know, you said a key thing, Pastor mm -hmm. Ernie, that the Lord brought the people. Right. So it's important, of course, right, to evangelize. Right. Um, you know, be very assertive, knock on doors, invite others right. to the church service. Right. But ultimately, we have to have faith to know that God is going to bring the people and everything is going to work out. When, when it's the Lord, it works out and yes. he brings right. it together. That right. is so powerful. It is true. And the Bible says that without faith, it's impossible to please. He's got mm -hmm. a lot of the people that came were from relationships, okay. building relationships with other people, going yes. out, knocking on doors, evangelizing people that I have done a ministry with in the past. And when we opened up, it was those very people that years prior to uh, us having the ministry, opening up the church, were ones that had said, if you ever have a church of your own, 
we want to be part of it. Wow. And yeah. it all consists of building relationships. Yeah. And that's so important because I think a lot of times people just assume that, oh, we could just get a church and that's it. But right. it really yeah. is based on... when it. I believe when it's a God thing, first of all, God will supply everything that you need. Right, right. right. He'll supply the people that you need. Right. But it's all built on those relationships. Right. People, they will support you, but it's, it's so... It, the support is different when it's people that you've worked with, you've prayed for, right. they know you've been there, mm -hmm. you know their family. It's just different right. when you um, have that type of support. Right, right. And relationship. It is true. And one of the things that even when we have our meetings there and I tell our church, I said, you think we're here by coincidence? I don't believe in coincidence. I believe right. in divine appointment yes. Yes. because I remember in those uh, days back, my dad uh, was a minister. He was a, a, a missionary for over 30 years. Oh, wow. And one of the things that oh. we used to do is he, we would sit at the table and he would minister the word and he would pray over my life. And he would tell me that, that nothing is by coincidence. It's all divine appointment. Mm -hmm. And we would sit there for hours and he would run uh, our whole entire life, his life, my mom's life, my brother's and my sister's life. And at the end of it, he would say this. I, I said all this to tell you this, that the same God of love that has been there for me and your mom and our children is the same God of love that is going to be there for you, your wife, your children, and also your grandchildren. Yes. And the purpose that he has for you in your life. And I come to learn that when I started getting familiar with the scriptures, like in Psalms 139, where it says that all of our days before they come to pass have already been written in God's book. Mm -hmm. So I tell the congregation, it's not by coincidence we're here, it's divine appointment. Yes. That through the relationships in the year, through everything that we've all gone through, knowing one another and being there for one another, that God had already established this ministry yes. in his time. Mm. Well, what a wonderful legacy that your father left yes, you. Yes. He was a missionary for 30 years. 30 years. Wow. Yes. Now, did he go to particular countries? Was there one, maybe one country, one area that the Lord consistently sent him to? What was, just briefly, what was his ministry? His like? ministry was going to Mexico. Mexico. Mm -hmm. Deep down in Mexico. And one of the things my dad had a love and a passion for people. Mm -hmm. And so what he would do is go and... And one of the beautiful things about him, my dad did construction, and he told my mom this. He said, uh, I will never use the finances of our household to go meet the needs of people. God will provide. Mm. And by him just sharing stories, working in people's homes, and, and sharing with the people his mission and what God called him to do to be a missionary, by the time he was done ministering to them, they would pull out their, either their purses or wallets and bless him with the money. Mm. And he would always have his, his suitcase packed in the corner. And he would tell my mom, when God says it's time, I got to go. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And he would go. And one of the things that he loved was to go over there, use those finances to purchase food, purchase clothing, purchase Bibles, and go over there and go by, by way of train and, uh, and by bus. And wherever the bus would stop or the train would stop, he would get off buy food, and just meet the needs there of the people. That's amazing. That's amazing. So, you know, I know, Pastor Ernie, that San Bernardino is considered right. one of the poorest cities right. in all of America. Right. Now, how is the Lord using your church to meet those needs that are there in that city? I do, I, I, I do believe without a shadow of a doubt that that was invested in me to go out to part of evangelism. So there's a lot of need there. Yes. There's a lot of need there, and especially where God planted us there in that area uh, between Del Rosa and Sterling. There's a lot of need there. So I truly believe that God is raising us up there uh, in this city, uh, there at that church for such a time as this. To go out there and evangelize, as a matter of fact, we went out knocking on uh, this past Saturday. We went out just uh, knocking on doors, okay, mm -hmm. inviting people to come to the service. And yes, sometimes, you know, they shut the door on you. They say, we don't want to hear it. But there was this one young man that he caught my interest when he came to the door. I even stepped back a little bit because as he came to the door, this young man was just covered in tattoos all over his face, his head, and everything. 
But what struck my heart was the love, the compassion. And though he stood there and we were giving him Jesus, presenting Jesus to him, it was kind of like that facade of the hardness of prison life. But when we left from there, I told my assistant pastor, Pastor Albert, I said, we're coming back. We have to come back because under all mm -hmm. that, there's somebody there that's hurting. Right. He's hurting. He's broken. And we're going to come back and minister the love of Jesus. Yeah. And I, I believe by faith that one day he's going to walk in those doors mm -hmm. and he's going to sit there in the church. Yes, you know, yes. it's so good to hear you say that you went out into the community. So oftentimes we don't hear that. Right. The church is a building right. where people come on a Sunday, right. maybe for a midweek service. But it's so refreshing and so great to hear right. that you are right. actually stepping out of the four walls of the church, right. going into the community and right. meeting needs of people. That's right. That's right. And, and I wouldn't have no other way. I, my passion also, Pastor Ray, Pastor Stephanie, is to go out into the hospital, uh, yes. into the convalescent hospitals, mm -hmm. mm. just going out where the need, because also, too, I know that, that there's a lot of people that can't come to the church. Right. Mm -hmm. So we have to, we are the church, and we have to take the church to them. And we yes. have to go take the love of God to them. Mm -hmm. And the majority of us here, we can use our legs and our arms and our mouths to, to be the, the representative of Jesus. But a lot of them can't hear the message. Right. Mm -hmm. So God will use us. And, yes. and I believe that God put that deeply in my heart. And that's one of the things that uh, I understood because, you know, going back a little bit to my past life, you know, being a gang member and involved in drugs and uh, prison life that so I come to know the scriptures and the, the Bible says that, you know, we were created in the mm -hmm. image of God. Mm -hmm. You see, I wasn't, I couldn't find out, I wasn't created to be a gang member. That's right. I wasn't created yeah. to go to prison. I wasn't created to do drugs. Right. I was created in the image of mm. God. Yes. I love the Bible says that Amen. God is love. God is love. Yes. Amen. So what did love do for us? Mm -hmm. Love came and demonstrated itself, you know what, in this world through Jesus by coming down and loving us, forgiving us of our sins, and just being there for us. So that's the heartbeat that should, all, that should be the heartbeat of every Christian. Right. Mm -hmm. That should right. be it. That, you know what, now we're created in his image to go out and demonstrate his love. Amen. Yes. Well, Pastor Amen. Ernie, Pastor Tony, I want you to hold that thought. And when we come back, we're going to hear more about the powerful way that God is using Pastor Ernie and Pastor Tony in the city of San Bernardino. We'll be right amen, back. Amen, amen. Praise God. Praise God. Your financial support helps inspire international ministries go into all the world to share the gospel and God's love. Visit our website at www.inspireim.org. And thank you for your gifts of love. Hello, this is Pastor Ray with Inspire International Ministries. And in January of 2018, we will be launching Inspire International Church. Our vision is seeking the lost and training believers to fulfill their purpose in God's kingdom. Through our TV program, Inspire TV, we have seen people come to the Lord. Now is the time to establish a house for God and rescue the people from being separated from Him. To introduce Inspire Church to the community, we have planned an interest gathering. This will be a time to hear the vision, experience the worship, and meet the leaders. If you've been looking for a place to belong and serve, this is the place. So come and join us for our interest gathering. God bless you, and we look forward to seeing you there. Praise God, and yes, we look forward to seeing you there this Sunday. January the 14th is going to be our interest gathering. And a lot of people have been asking me, Stephanie, what is the interest gathering about? Is it a church service or is it a meeting? What in the world are you guys doing? Well, let me just share with you. Our interest gathering is really set up for you to see who Pastor Ray is, 
meet some of the leaders, experience the worship that's going on, and most importantly, hear the vision of our church and, and what the Lord has shared with Pastor Ray. Um, for many of you who don't know, the television show is actually a pre-launch to our church, Inspire International Church, which will be starting February the 18th. And we're looking for people that really want, they're seeking, maybe, maybe the Lord is saying, hey, I need you to maybe go someplace and, and serve, or the Lord may be saying, I need you to just get into church. Or maybe you might feel like God um, um, just wants you to use your gift a little bit more. Well, we would like for you to come and check this church out, um, see what we're doing, see what God is um, saying to us, and see if you would like to be a part of Inspire International Church. Pastor Ray? Well, welcome back. We're here with Pastors Ernie and Tony Ceballos of Everlasting Covenant Ministries in San Bernardino. You know, some may be afraid of the inner city. So San Bernardino is the inner city. And, you know, some ministries, they won't want to go to the right. inner city because right. they're afraid. There's too many gangs. There's too much drug activity. There's too much violence. Or it's a lot of work. What? Or it's a lot of work. Sometimes they think, well, there's, there's so many poor, they're not going to give yeah, right. to support yeah. our ministry. Right. What compels you to be in San Bernardino? What compels us is uh, the love of God, first of all, because mm -hmm. he is love. And to go out there, because when you go and you look deep down, you, know, you can drive by the street, and yes, you can just look around and say, you know what, but uh, who am I to speak to them or, or share the love of Jesus? But it takes all of us. And mm -hmm. the main thing is that, that knowing that there's people that are hurting. Yes. Mm -hmm. They're broken. When you drive down those streets, one of the things that God put in my heart, when I look at those homes, and in there God shows me in one of those rooms, whether the living room, whether the bedroom, whether the bathroom, there's somebody in there that is broken and hurting mm. and getting ready to give up all right. on our hope. Mm -hmm. A lot of time we just drive by. Mm -hmm. We're not concerned with people. But we really have to stop and ask God, you created me for purpose. Yeah. You created me for such a time as this. And I know that that's one thing that God put in my heart. Yes. I know there was a special calling on my life when I was young and I sat on my dad's garage one day and I looked up and there God spoke to my heart. And I knew that from that point, God said, you're special. You're special. And through the years and everything that we've gone through and now being there in San Bernardino, one of the hardest areas there, that now God revealed to me, it is for this time. Yeah. Because I put that heart, my heart in you. Mm -hmm. yeah. That when you can drive, and even though there's walls and, and even though there's streets and barriers there, but you've been called to see what's going on behind those walls mm -hmm. and to bring those people out and basically share the gospel, the good news. Mm -hmm. The message, that's why Paul said, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power mm. unto salvation. Mm. There's power behind the message mm -hmm. of the gospel, mm -hmm. and people need to hear it. Mm. You know, I can imagine that you're so excited, not simply because God has put you there right. and given you the power to reach the people, but he's given you a dynamic team to help you. What, yeah. what do you, for, th for this year, what do you have planned for your leadership? How are you going to raise them up to move forward? This, uh, what we got planned, what God is showing us, as a matter of fact, we have our, our leadership meeting tonight. Okay. And so awesome. that's one of the things that we're going <laughs> to implement. And one of the things that God really put in my heart as far as leadership is to come back to the Word of God. Okay. To come back to the Word of God, get to know God, yes. have a personal relationship yes. with God. Because without that relationship and seeking God, because He's a holy God. And the Bible says that, you know what, that he dwells in the book of Isaiah. It says that, that, that he dwells with those with the broken heart, yes. a contrite heart, mm -hmm. a contrite spirit. And so seeking God in that, and one of the things that I want to implement in our leadership is that, that always walk humbly mm -hmm. before your God. Right. Because as we walk humbly before our God, like the Bible says, I believe in uh, the Beatitude, Matthew chapter 5, that the meek shall inherit the earth. Uh -huh. We're looking to inherit this earth here and the souls and the lives right. that are there. But the meek, those that are humble, mm. shall inherit 
the earth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I just, because we've known you all for quite some time. Right, and right. Uh, I just, I love your spirit. Mm -hmm. You know, when we first met, ooh, years ago, you were working in the ministry that was for like the convalescent, which right. we mentioned before. Care ministry. And right. you know, it's so interesting because I remember at the time we both went to the same church and they were looking for someone to actually fulfill that spot, you know, because it's not a glamorous spot. Right. You know, yeah, you're visiting yeah. hospitals, people have issues and you have to go to their home and everything. And you were the person that actually um, came to mind. But I'm going to tell you, you were and have been a perfect fit mm -hmm. for just the broken hearted and your spirit you and your and pastor tony you have such a, a soft spirit for people that you know when you minister to people that are sick you know visiting in the hospitals and different things you know it really takes a, a um how can i say a, a just a quiet spirit but, but yet powerful. Right. And when I think of you all, that's what I see is someone, a couple that can go into the hearts of the inner city hardcore gang member and just touch their heart, but yet still be the same couple that goes to that person who is in intensive care and may not be able to say anything, but yet you all have been such a blessing and you're able to go in and just provide comfort and I just want to say thank you for being an example and it just really goes to show that um, God has given each person an assignment right you right. know sometimes we try to be everything to all people but you know it's a reason why you're in San Bernardino and God has given you that heart it's a reason why you all were were the um, pastors that went to the hospitals and really really did the caring, the care pastor, right, actually, that's right, what it was, right? right. Care pastor, yes. the caring that a lot of people, they don't want to spend the time to do. And so I just want to say thank you for being that example, because we need more ministers and pastors right. and leaders that have that heart right. for people. Right. Well, and we're not going to let you get away because you're <laughs> going to say something. <laughs> this is Pastor Tony. She's amazing. And what are you doing with the women? Because I know that you have a lot of women that come and, you know, they're broken and they have different things that are going on well i do um i've been having bible study women's bible study yes. for about a good 10 years now wow. so when we started the ministry it just continued on so we have a woman's um, bible study in the morning from um, 10 to 11 45 and mm -hmm. then um, mm -hmm. i'm praying right now for something fresh something new um maybe towards the evening to yeah. have open up another uh, woman's I don't I, I'm not quite sure yet I'm still praying on this um, Amen. you Amen. know because I want God to just um, put something fresh and yes. something new yeah. for this year yeah. um, I don't want to be leaning on the old things of the past right. I want to okay. you know right. something fresh. fresh and exciting right. for the women and um, we had a like we've only been in ministry for about a year and a half Mm -hmm. So um, I'm excited. Yeah, you know, you've been for, in ministry for what? 29 well, years and 30 years. years. Yes. <laughs> you know, yeah, I can't, yeah, yeah. For yeah. this time, oh, yeah. yeah, ministry at home <laughs> yeah. with your children oh, first, that right? Is right. right there. Exactly. Yeah. So That's I have to start. say to our yes. TV audience, this woman is a powerful woman of God. She's all meek and quiet and praise <laughs> God and thank you, Jesus. There's a powerhouse in there. There is a powerhouse That's in there. That's right. And I just want to, I see the glory of God on you. I'm just so excited for what's happening. We're excited yes. for what's happening in your ministry. Right. And, you know, it's just amazing. When God said it's time, it's just time. Amen. And he provides everything that we need. Yes. Amen. 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 I want to elaborate a little bit on that. And, you know, behind uh, every good man, there's a good woman. Yes, amen. And I wouldn't be able to do the ministry that I'm doing, you know, it takes a lot. It is. It's a lot mm -hmm. of work, a lot mm -hmm. of going into the hospitals and speaking with people, families, so many things that are going on. Yeah. And sometimes when I do come home, I, I you know, I, I, I express it and I see all the things that. Sure. But I have a good wife. Yes. That Amen. is there behind the scenes. Amen. Praying. Yes. Praying. She might not do a lot uh, in the open. But behind the scenes, Ooh, that's, I said, that's I need the that. foundation right there. I need is that. Prayer. And that's the foundation. Yeah. That's everything. Prayer. The prayer, mm -hmm. prayer. Right. So, you know, I, I, I honor my wife, you know, for being there for me. Amen. And even at the time when you do sometimes want to give up and say, this is it, she says, you can't. Right. You can't. <laughs> you can't. That's women called. power. That's <laughs> what we do. We, 
We're your we helper. You know the women, the truth. Right. She's supposed to be your helper, so right. we're like, I can't know. I'm gonna help you right now. And she pushed it, you know. But I, I love that about it, and, and and I believe that you know, with the grace of God and the mercy of God and her love, yeah. that that you know, we we made it this far. We've come yes. this far, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And 2018. It's the beginning. Yeah. We ain't seen nothing yet. Of Ooh, right. How for exciting. Us to do it. Like I said, he, he brought us this far. Yeah. And, you know, I, one of my uh, uh, best scriptures is Philippians 1 6. Mm. Being confident of this very thing. He that began yes. the good work is faithful and just to bring it into completion until that glorious day. So, what he started, this is part of it. This mm. is part of it right here. And he's going to, not only did he start it, but he's going to finish it. He's Ooh, gonna finish. You know, can I just yes. interject real here? I, as you were speaking, um, Pastor, the Lord wanted me to tell you that you are faithful. And what he brought into my mind, and you may not remember it, but he remembers all the times that you read the word at the downtown mission. Mm. And as you, and I, what I saw was specifically the word of God open. Thank you, Lord. All the times that you went and you were faithful to study the word, he remembers that. Wow. And he calls you faithful. Amen. You, Amen. Amen. You know, Pastor yes. Ernie, for these last few moments, about four or five minutes that we have, I want for you to look into your camera, and I want for you to minister the good news of Jesus Christ to our audience, and I want you to lead them to Christ. Amen. I just want to tell everybody that is hearing my voice here today that that same great work that God did in my life, my wife's life, bringing us together, 35 years of marriage wasn't easy in the beginning, but we had that glimpse of hope. And, you know, people say that the greatest loss in life is the loss of a loved one. But I tend to say this, that the greatest loss in life is not the loss of a loved one. The greatest loss in life is what you allow to die within you while you're still living. Mm -hmm. You see, when you give up hope, there's really nothing left. But if you're watching this program and you're hearing our voices here today, I want to let you know that there's hope in Jesus and that Jesus Christ loves you and that he came down here and, and he gave his life because he loved us. And he came down here and he walked on this earth and ultimately went to that cross. Nobody took his life, but he laid down his life and he shed his precious blood to wash away all our sins and guilt and, and shame. And it's one thing that I had to do at one point in my life. I had to surrender my life, the life that I thought I had, and give it over and put my trust and my faith and my confidence in Jesus because he loved me and he gave his life for me. So you might be there uh, hearing me right now, and I want to let you know that Jesus Christ loves you. And I want to lead you in a simple prayer here today. But I want to also let you know this, that it's not the, uh, the, the prayer that saves you, but it's your faith in Jesus. Mm -hmm. It's your faith in Jesus. Yeah. That you accept him and that you know that he is the son of God mm -hmm. and that he left heaven, and that he came down here. And it was love that took him to that cross there. So I want you to, I want to say this prayer. And if you're there, just simply say this prayer, repeat it after me, but believe it in your heart. And know without a shadow of a doubt that Jesus does love you and that there's hope. And like I, I, I mentioned earlier, this is a, one of my other uh, favorite scriptures is Psalm 139 that says this, that all of our days before they come to pass have already been written in God's books. That even us being here today, it's, not, it, it, it's divine appointment. Mm -hmm. and God knew that we were all going to be here. God knew you were going to be watching and hearing my voice here today. Here today. So I want to lead you in a simple prayer uh, that will lead you uh, to, to the love of Jesus. And not only that, eternal life. Just pray with me this. Just say, dear Jesus, today I come to you as a sinner in need of a Savior. And today I would ask you to forgive me of all of my sins. And today I hear the knock on the door of my heart. And I open that door. And I receive you as my Lord and my Savior. And I truly believe that you are the Son of God. That you came to this earth and you walked on this earth. 
and you went to that cross and you laid down your life because you loved me. And you were buried on, uh, in that tomb and on the third day you rose to life. So I truly believe today with all my heart that you are my Lord and you are my Savior. And I thank you, Lord, for dying on that cross and giving your life to save my life. And Holy Spirit, baptize me and teach me how to live the rest of my days here on this earth. Yes. In Jesus' name I pray. In Jesus name. Amen. 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 Pastor Zerni, Pastor Tony, yes. thank you so much for oh joining us. Thank you so thank much. You so much. Appreciate you so both much. so much. You know, if you said that prayer, we want for you to drop us a note. Let us know on our website, inspireim.org. God bless you. Thank you for joining us. And don't forget, God loves you and has a purpose for your life. Yes. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Your financial support helps Inspire International Ministries go into all the world to share the gospel and God's love. Visit our website at www.inspireim.org. And thank you for your gifts of love.